is a quick glossary term video for you because we say a lot of weird things in archaeology and I want to make sure you're, we're on the same page so you don't only watch these videos for fun but you actually learn something too. So if you watch the stratigraphy video you probably heard some of these terms called features, cuts, and fills. So we're going to go through each one of those right now and hopefully with the help of technology some fun graphics will appear over here. A feature in archaeology can be described as a single or a collection of contexts of human activity that cannot be removed from the ground without changing its form. So it's not an artifact. It's generally a vertical characteristic within the ground, such as a pit or a grave, a wall, a post hole, a fire pit, a cisterns, you name it. Anything that kind of cuts through the ground vertically is a feature. So it's all in relation to the stratigraphy of the site. If you don't know much about, about stratigraphy, I have a video on that too, so make sure you go watch that to completely understand everything I'm talking about. Features interrupt the horizontal layer of a site essentially, and can have cuts associated with them as usually some dirt needs to be taken away in order to create the feature. Fills are the materials that have either been deposited into the feature or have accumulated over time. Remember that it happens after the feature has been created. These are super important because they, have, they hold a lot of information and they have their own stratigraphic layers within them. It's stratigraphy within the stratigraphy itself. Stratigraphyception! So you normally have the primary fill, which is just the normal debris that accumulates right after the feature or the cut has been formed. This is before anything intentional is placed inside of it. But a natural buildup of debris can also mean that a feature is falling into disuse. And all the other layers kind of just build up on top of this. A kind of a really cool thing with fills is that it's associated with this process called slumping. It's a fun word. Slumping can happen at other times as well, but let's just focus on fills for now. So over time, all of the buildup in the fill consolidates. Pressure builds up on itself from the weight and it can essentially quasi-collapse on itself. It makes this dip in the earth. This obviously get, then gets covered with more dirt, but the, the slump itself, the indentation, can actually remain quite visible on the landscape. Since the debris and everything has moved so drastically, it's extremely important to be careful when excavating a site like this. Studying fills is really vital to us, as it can tell us a lot about the feature by the way that the stratigraphic layers have been produced. Even if there aren't any artifacts to pull out, the, the layers itself do still tell us quite a bit. And cuts. Cuts are when archaeological remains are removed from the ground in order to build something new. Essentially someone decided to go and dig a hole into the past. This happens all the time because we as a species are always moving forward and we're always developing and always building new things. Cuts can be for a pit or a ditch. It's just another way of context being removed from a site. And it's also useful because it can give us context into the reuse of the site and the continued human existence there. Sometimes it's super easy to identify cuts as they can leave a mark in the soil, but other times you really need to pay attention to where you're digging and what you're doing in order to catch it. Cuts are deemed a negative context as it takes the original context out of the ground, whereas a positive context adds something to the archeological record. You have to look at a cut in terms of the context that's around it, as that is what's going to give you the most information. It's also the reason that some parts of human activity just don't show up at all. Now you can also have a cut within a cut. Cutception! These are also pits of knowledge. See what I did there? As they can show the changing use of the site over time. Recuts are made usually within the original cut or intersecting with it. And they're usually carried out so the cut can regain its original function. As we know, dirt and silt builds up over time, so if you have a ditch or something over, the, over a bunch of years, it will build up and it won't be able to, be, to remain functional anymore unless you recut it and repurpose it for that use again. So if you build a ditch or something and you still need it, you need to make sure that you keep the land open so it can continue to serve its purpose. Okay, so that was a little bit longer than expected, but I hope you got all of that. If you have any more questions, go ahead and shoot me an email or check out my website for a little bit more of a description and external resources. As always, links in the description. And that's all for today. Stay dirty, my friends.